In this video, we are going to get an introduction to shaders in Godot by learning how to make the shader on this magical meat pie of mine. And also we're gonna find out how to implement shaders other folks have made and shared like the water and the star field. Well, from my extensive research, a shader is code used to tell the GPU how to render each pixel on the screen. So we can maybe think about it like a, a filter or, or maybe a filter for each pixel that can change at any given time. In Godot, we've got a few different types of shaders we can use, each serving a different purpose. So we've got our spatial shaders for 3D rendering, canvas item for our 2D rendering, particles for our particle systems, sky for, yeah, you guessed it, and fog again. You're very bright. So we're just gonna focus on canvas item shaders in this video, so 2D stuff. But if you want videos about the other types as well, please do let me know in the comments below. Our goal is to make this magnificently Moorish meat pie look magical by having colors cycling through, but we are going to build our way up to that in baby steps. So we've got ourselves a simple new project here. We are gonna create a 2D scene with a node 2D as the root, and we're gonna add a sprite 2D to it. This is gonna be our control, right? So we've got something to compare all the changes we make to. So we've got a node to d as our root and then a sprite to d called control. And I've just given it our lovely Godot um, face texture. So that is it. This is the starting position. So get yourself ready. And then we're gonna start making our first shader. First shader is gonna be pretty basic. Uh, so it's just to get us started, right? Get us understanding what's what. So let's. Click on our root node, let's add another Sprite 2D. Let's also give that one our icon texture and drag it down. And that one's called Control, this one, let's call it Test 1. All right, now when we wanna add a shader to a Sprite 2D or, or any other node, we wanna come over to our Inspector window and look for our Material menu. And then with our Material here, we wanna click on Empty and go New Shader Material. Click on that sphere and then our shader comes up here and we're gonna go new shader and we're gonna call this test one. Why are we calling it test one? Because that's the name of the node. Let's keep it simple guys. All right, so in our shader editor, so double click on that new shader you've just made. Let's create a bit more space here. We're gonna get rid of all what we've got in there and I'm gonna paste in my shader to start with. So let's work our way through. You've seen it's already changed color. So the shader type, canvas item, you will recall Call. We said there were four different types of shaders in Godot. Uh, it was canvas item, spatial, or five? Five different types. Um, spatial, blah, blah, blah. Canvas item is our 2D one. That is what we are working with here. So we're just declaring what type we're working with. Our void fragment, this is where, as far as I understand it, we are essentially gonna have a look at every single pixel and see what is going on there. So it's like we're fragmenting it all up into each individual pixel. Um, and then we're gonna go from there. And then we're going down here and we're gonna create a, um, a new variable called color, which will be vec4. Um, and it is going to be equal to our texture, which is gonna grab our texture in our UV. So what the hell is all of that? All right, so um, the color, here, and you'll appreciate I'm spelling it your way, Americans, given that you seem to make up the majority of my audience. Um, we've got our color here, it, and really though, if I'm honest, it's because we wanna be consistent through here, isn't it? So it's just a lot easier. Anyways, um, where was I here? So texture, all right, so this function, what we wanna do is we wanna fetch the color of the current texture at the specified UV coordinates, all right? So we wanna fetch the color of the current texture the color of the current texture at the specified UV coordinates. Um, what else are we doing here? We then are gonna have a play around with each of those colors. So every single pixel of this texture. So if you look up here, you'll see that those corners where there isn't any um, logo here, those corners don't have anything going on there, right? Because there is no texture that it's referring to. If we were to go back out to here and actually get rid of our um, sprite, then our green disappears because there is no texture to change. I hope that makes sense. 
we are changing the texture that we've put in there. That's what we're specifically doing. And it's green because we've said one for green and zero for red and zero for blue. Obviously, if we change these around, you can get different sorts of things happening, right? But um, I don't know why I chose green, but I did. So that is our first step, okay? We're gonna break up every pixel in our texture and change their properties. That's a shader, but it's not a particularly useful shader, if I'm honest. Actually, looking at it here, I think this, we could probably do this as a VEC3, actually. See, I'm always learning new things as well with, with every video that I do on here. And, you know, I might not always be able to exercise my actual body, but I can always exercise me old noggin. And if, like me, you love learning by doing, then I think you will love this video's sponsor, Brilliant. See, thanks to Brilliant, I've been able to develop a regular study habit, which is seeing my knowledge of computer science come along in leaps and bounds. I've been able to directly apply the new programming principles I have learned to the games, lessons, and apps that I make. Brilliant isn't only about computer science, though. There are courses in math, science, data analysis, and AI, all to help you on your own learning journey. Go to brilliant.org forward slash Outback Nerd, click the link in the description or scan the QR code here to get 30 days free access and 20% off a premium annual subscription to give your next learning goal the best chance of being reached. All right, time for our next one. So let's create another Sprite 2D node. We're gonna call this, I reckon you can probably guess, test two. All right, test two is gonna get the same texture as the others. Let's drag it down, get it all lined up. All right, so what are we gonna do in test two? Well, first we need to add a material, <clears throat> new shader material, click on the sphere, click on the empty, click new shader. We're gonna call it test two, okay. But let's get our test two open. All right, test two is open, let's get rid of all of that and let's paste in what our code will be for test two. Okay, so we are going to, as before, go with our canvas item as our shader type, and again, we're gonna be using that fragment. So we've got our same looking sort of VEC4 color stuff here. We're then going to do this a little bit differently because we wanna manipulate the alpha this time. So our color RGB equals mix, the color, and then our VEC3, which is gonna be that color. So that's our green there in the middle, right? So if we have a look back at test one, we just expressed it a little bit differently. So remember I was saying, oh, maybe we could do that as a vector three. All right, vector three, du, du, du. So we're still going with green, but then our alpha here, we're saying we only want half of it. So we wanna mix green, um, with sort of 50% alpha and then use that as our color for our um, thingo, thingo sprite. Now, what you might be thinking is, well, that's just a color modulate, a canvas modulate. No, not a canvas, it's just a modulation. Just, just, a, just a modulation. All right, I think I'm gonna break into some sort of weird robotic wrap. Let's go back to our control and let's just modulate it, right? So go visibility, modulate, and then just find a green. It's a little bit different. So the, the modulate, and the um, doing it as a shader handle this a little bit differently. So the shader is just gonna give us an even green over the top, whereas our modulate's gonna be um, manipulating the, the, the individual colors a little bit differently. So it's a bit of a different one. Uh, yeah, oh, I didn't mean to undo that bit. Anyway, um, you've probably worked out that it's pretty easy to change these things around. So maybe we want this to be 0 0.5, this one here to be one, and we want it to be three. Uh, 0.3. We give that a moment to change, and now we've got more of a blue. Um, maybe we want to bring in some of the uh, the red as well. Give it a chance, and it changes. So it's really super simple, just to give a tint to a particular um, sprite or a particular um, tile um, in a tile map, something like that. Very very easy. Let us see what we have done because we haven't been doing that yet. So let's just call this our um, shader scene. Excellent. Let's get on to our next one, and that is going to be a gradient. So we want another Sprite 2D. We're going to call it Test 3. What a surprise. Let's give it the Icon SVG. Drag it down in line with our other victims. Let's go Material, Empty, Shader. Click on the Sphere, 
and the new shader material. Test three. All right, let's open that one up and get rid of all the guff and put in our new coat. All right, let's talk through this one. Very similar, you should be seeing straight away, right? So we're still doing canvas item, fragment, VEC4 color, texture, texture UV. Then we've got our VEC3 here for our gradient color variable. And we want it to be a mix of this VEC3, which is one on our green, and this VEC3, which is one on our blue, and then our UV of Y uv dot y sorry so we're we're making a gradient yeah so then our color is going to be our rgb which equals our mix of our color rgb this one here right this equals that plus the gradient color this one here along our y um, at 0.5 there's our alpha and then we paint it basically so we've got our green at the top our blue at the bottom we're sort of meeting in the middle fading between them etc i reckon that's a pretty good effect um, that we can do pretty quickly in a few lines of code save as we go Ooh, there goes one of my dogs um okay it is time to move on to the pista resistance so you remember our goal was to make my meat pie look magical so instead of just a, a moorish meat pie we can have a moorish magical meat pie um, I don't know what it is about alliteration. I love it. Okay, so we're going to need to grab another, yes, Sprite 2D, you know what's going on. And it's going to be called Test 4, of course. And we're going to give it the same texture as we've given the others. Let's drag it down, line it up. It's a lineup of possible perps. Uh, okay, material, empty, become the shader material. Click on that, shader, and new material. And this one will be Test 4. Let's open that one up. Okay, delete the guff, insert. So as before, we are using that canvas item. We are using a fragment. We've got our VEC4 color equals texture, texture UV, right? All of this is the same. Here is where it gets different. We are adding in three new floats, which are going to be related to the time for each of our red, green, and blue. All right, and this is how we are making that. So we're gonna use a sign of the time plus one times 0 0.5, and then we wanna offset it for green and offset it for blue so that they are cycling at different times, um, if that makes sense. All right, so this is just teeing up our red, green, and blue to be slightly out of phase, you could say. Now we come down here, we paint those pixels, our red, green, and blue, um, based on the mix of, here is how I'm setting my red to one full, with our time factor of R. So this is where we're applying that phase basically to each of the individual colors, um, and then paint it. So in uh, that many lines, what have we got there? 16 and we've got some blanks. We can actually get that magical Moorish meat pie happening, though in this case it's our Godot logo. Um, but I can dump that on into mine at any point. So I had promised that we will also have a look at how to employ far more complex shaders that other far more intelligent people than myself have prepared. So why don't we have a look at that? to actually find some Godof, good, 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 which it looks like this, and we are going to have a look for a star field. Alrighty, and here it is here first one we find we're going to click on that star field so this is uh, has been uploaded by Cobb and they're saying if you like this shader you should check out star nest a shader toy ported by blah, blah, blah. Um, so I am the first to admit I do not know a lot when it comes to this sort of gear right so poke around on this particular website you're gonna learn a lot about shaders just by reading some of the things that you're interested in but this particular shader is a canvas item we can copy that and we can bring that into our game so Let let's go that. our no 2d let us add a new sprite 2d and yep let's give it that bloody texture there we go now we're gonna as before let's just add a material it's gonna be new shader material click on it click on empty click on new shader material we're gonna call this one star field however and we should probably call this here stars or something as well all right now where is our star field there it is there let's open it up let's delete what they've got there and let's paste in what um, we have uh, copied from that other page. And what we're gonna do before we move on any further is we just wanna tweak something here. So shader parameters, 
and uh, dust color. We're going to change that to a um, some sort of black. There we go, like that. Okay, and then um, we can just make this guy stretch out a bit in our background. Need to make him for that There we go, and then let's um, drag him back. Let's grab these guys center them there and let's have a look at what this looks like in the game yeah side by side our control our fully green one our tinted green one our gradient and our color cycle as well as using someone else's shader um, as our star field there and um, same thing you can do that with uh, even individual tiles of a tile map you can set up a material just for that um, if that's something you'd like me to actually show you just let me know but I think that is it so thank you for sticking with me uh, thus far I hope you learned something if you haven't already why not give the channel a subscribe give the video a like and share it with your mates that gets us out get it get gets it out to people and of course, don't forget to check out uh, brilliant.org forward slash Outback Nerd. Get yourself a free 30 day trial or 20% off an annual subscription. Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you next time.